Social media is killing your creativity. I know you might say, social media is supposed to be a creative platform. Yes and no. So what happens when you immerse yourself too much in others' creativity? You can't create your own unique space and ideas. Most of the time, when you turn to social media for inspiration, you end up just distracting yourself. And with the algorithm of these apps, they show you a few posts that are relevant, and then after some time, they just start to derail you, keeping your attention, but turning off the part of your brain that generates your own thoughts. You begin to mindlessly scroll and completely forget why you're on the app in the first place. This has happened to me countless times. Social media apps are not meant to benefit you. 99% of the time, they are there just to keep you stuck. They are used to numb your emotions and identity so you lose track of time and reality. How can we get in touch with our inner creativity again? Part one, removing the problem. Part of the issue with lack of creativity is just pure distraction from it. Creativity comes from within, and if you're constantly blocking it out or filling your brain with others' ideas, you're not giving room for your own point of view. Number one, delete the apps. Now this may sound easy, but your brain will find a way to get through. So just completely removing the apps and creating that time barrier of resistance to getting on social media can help you limit the distraction. Which leads me to number two, get extensions on your computer or phone to block those sites. For part of my business, I have to use social media. So one way to avoid it is that I just keep social media on my laptop, which is less accessible. If you're worried about your friends not being able to reach you, just give them your phone number or any other app that is less distracting. There are a few apps and extensions I do recommend to increase the time it takes you to get to those distractions. Number one, OneSec for Android and Apple. Number two, Unhooked, which is a Chrome extension I use for YouTube. Three, Opal for Apple. Four, Minimalist Phone for Android and Apple. Now, some of these you may have to pay for, but usually there are free versions of the apps. Number three, practice mindfulness and build new habits towards limiting screen time in general. For example, don't sleep in the same room as your phone. Try getting a physical alarm clock. Try to go one or two meals without any technology and put your phone on silent, especially when you're doing deep work or sleeping. Number four, don't surround yourself with negative people online and in person. It gets a little unnecessary when people are constantly telling you about negative drama or news or things that just don't really apply to you. Do be a good friend, but if that friend is really complaining all the time, maybe it's time you take a little break from them too. It can really mess up your mind and focus when you're only thinking about negative things. Number five, don't go for cheap pleasures. As you start taking away your phone, which is one of our main distractions, your brain will start to look for other things, such as sweet foods or processed foods, maybe the TV, unhealthy friend or work drama, or even worse habits for your health. So watch out for these traps that will fog and distract you. Part two, cultivating your creative space. Number one, try to get inspiration in new ways. Go for a walk outside or journey to a new park. Pick up a book or magazine to read, or maybe watch a few informational documentaries. Number two, ask a positive friend or family member of their ideas on a specific topic. Maybe they know something that you don't, so have an open mind towards that. Number three, make time for your thoughts. And this is probably the most important one. Meditating, journaling, or even just sitting on the porch with a nice warm beverage or driving to work without listening to any podcast or music. Let your brain talk to itself and let it keep going. Explore your thoughts and ideas and keep asking questions. Be curious as to why you think one thing and be open to other possibilities. Number four, start a new or pick up an old project. The trick to getting past boredom is to schedule 30 minutes to one hour of a deep work session where you turn off all distractions. This may take a little bit of mental preparation, but in that time, 
This is where you need to force yourself to focus on something that's really, truly important to you and to really hunker down on getting that one thing done. It's also recommended to have these deep work sessions in the morning when your mind is clear and free of distractions from the day. It will take some time getting into your flow state, so try not to get discouraged in the beginning. Number five. Find short-term actions and habits that lead to long-term effects and pleasure. For instance, writing for 15 minutes a day can help you long-term to organize and clarify your thoughts. Or even taking five minutes to clean your kitchen at the end of the day so that you can better prepare your meals and set yourself up for success. Number six, once you can truly step away from social media, you can start to use it as a tool. Ask yourself, what is the intention of using this app? Does it actually align with my goals or is it getting me farther away from them? I found that if you usually don't have a real reason, you're just using it as a distraction from something else that's more important and meaningful to you. Unlocking your creativity is a process and it will take a lot of reflection and patience with yourself, not with your phone. When you finally do have those creative flow moments, the high and rush that you will get from actually doing something is far more better than the two seconds of instant gratification you get just from scrolling and before you know it you'll be addicted to creating and you'll be addicted to wanting to get into that flow state if you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about productivity go check out this video bye